welcome back to a sunny corner of YouTube again. Um, we've got a very bright desk today um, and we are going to be, or I am going to show you how I make these little cute teddy bear head charms um, that you can hang on your handbag or put your keys on um, or just use as part of a display. I will in the future be looking at how you make an actual whole teddy bear from needle belting so this would be um part one of that so um this would be the first part and then there will be another video that will show you how to if you wanted to to complete the body for this bear as well so that you could have a little teddy bear a little miniature teddy bear uh, but i thought for now we'd start with the head and that will also give you something that you can uh, utilize and use as well. So let's have a little look at the things that we're going to need in order to make our bear. I'll just rest him there for the moment. Let's put you down. So obviously the first important thing that we're going to need is some kind of roving or wool to work with to needle felt. Uh, so this one I've got here is kind of like a nice, it's a mustardy yellow, it's kind of like a yellow ochre but warmer than an ochre I think it's more of a mustard um, but you can use any colors that you like colors that you fancy you could go pastel you could go bright you know the world is your oyster you can pick whichever ones you want uh, whichever ones you have on hand as well so um, for the muzzle and sometimes people want to do the inside of the ears in this color as well and um, I didn't on this one but maybe we might go with that as well this time so for the inside of the ears and the muzzle you'll need a contrasting color that stands out quite nicely against and you can see it goes quite nicely on this little bear here so we're going to use that one this time for his nose we're going to do a very simple needle felted nose can you see this very tiny amount of black um, wool that i have here this is literally probably even half of this is all you're going to need for his nose it takes very little supplies um they also come together quite quickly so yeah that's a great thing to start with okay so the other things that we're going to need for this i have got a felting mat uh, this is my felting brush which is a clover one it's a smaller one of the two that clover make i do believe other companies make these now as well so do a little search and you'll be able to find something similar or just a felting mat. Uh, for the eyes of my bear, I've got these two little brads. So those are two tiny little brads. I think they're four millimeter ones. Um, for the needle felting purposes, I've just simply used this, um, this needle from uh, Heidi Feathers. I've got a bit of glue stuck on my hand. <laughs> this is a Heidi Feathers needle. It's a red top quite sure which one the red top is i think it is a 38 regular so if you're looking for a similar needle this is a 38 regular so it's kind of like um a general general all-purpose one it's not too fine and it's got enough on there to to do what we need it to do the other thing you're going to need in order to do his little uh, mouse is just a, a simple piece of sewing thread a black fairly thick I've got one here so this is like a pearl sewing thread um, but you could double up you could get like a, an embroidery thread and take it down to maybe three strands of an embroidery thread and that would do the same thing three or two strands you you can pick and see how that goes but those are the, that's all we need that's all we need in order to create this guy here so I am going to now show you how to make him okay so i have my length of roving you can see it's not too thick um and not too long it's just basically in order to make this little round shape it's more of an oval actually for his head um so i've separated a little bit off because i want this part to uh, make the ears so i've taken a bit off the end so it was probably i don't know about that long <laughs> and i've taken off that amount in order to make the ears. So I'll pop that to one side and I'll just push you up a little bit further. <laughs> adjust, adjust. So 
so that you can see a bit more of the, the table. Okay, so first thing we need to do is to get our roving and we're going to, oh look, there's a little bit of um, the debris that you get in this. It, it's quite natural to have that in your wall. It's nothing horrible. It's just a little bit of leaf maybe that a sheep he had on his fur, fur fluff. Uh, so you, you can see I'm kind of rolling it up now to try and get my ball shape. You don't want it to be um, too big. Uh, this will obviously felt down. So I've got kind of like a vague ball shape here. I'm going to bring in my felting mat. I'm going to grab my needle and just start stabbing away. What we're trying to do is to get that rounded, overly shape. The, the tighter you can get this, the easier your needle felting will be. Uh, but don't worry too much. It's if you get it, if it goes a little loose, you can just just keep felting it, keep pushing it in, trying to get that shape. Try not to get too many ridges on your um, piece when you're needle felting it, otherwise they will show. Uh, you can needle felt a lot of ridges out as well with a little bit of work, but if you don't get them in the first place, then it's a lot less work for you to do. So as you can see, I'm moving my uh, ball of wool around. Keep your fingers well out of way of where the needle is. If you want to, wear the finger protectors that you can get um, from a lot of needle felting supply places. They sell the little leather finger protectors that you can wear. That will help you in the beginning. Uh, I prefer not to wear them now. I've done needle felting for quite a few years now. And so even though I still do occasionally stab my finger with a needle, uh, it's very rare because I've learnt <laughs> the hard way <laughs> to keep my fingers out of the way. Um, so all I'm going to do now is I'm going to keep felting this and I will get it to a stage where it is not too hard. Um, it's going to be still a little bit fluffy because bears are fluffy, aren't they? They're not very very smooth so it's going to be a little bit fuzzy but not too fuzzy so what i'm going to do i'm going to continue with this i'll be back and show you the kind of finish that we can get on this when you've worked on it quite quite a while probably about five minutes i would say to get it five ten minutes to get it to the stage where we want it to be so i'll be back in a tick Okay, so I have got my base ball. It's more of a rugby shape. <laughs> no, it's more of a, an o a rounded oval um, because it kind of fits with this one here. It's probably a little bit, tiny bit bigger than the one that I've done previously, but that doesn't matter. It's not down to the size. It's the size that you want it to be. Um, so just look over it and see if there are any extra areas that need to be felted a little more and I think I'm I'm good to go with this one okay so the next thing that we need to do is to um, make our ears now this is a piece that I pulled off and what we want to do is to try and get an equal amount in each section of this because the ears need to be obviously very similar. There's another, another little bit of debris in there. So I'm kind of thinking them about there, splitting that in two. So what we again need to do, we need to make two balls out of this, uh, but kind of looser and you need to leave a little bit at the end to attach. And what we're going to do is to make our ear shape. We're going to keep moving it around to get in some kind of a, a vague ball, <laughs> a vague ball shape. Um, and then what happens then is that I'm going to cut, kind of flatten it down and then start needle felting in earnest, just trying to get that shape of an ear. Felting, felting, felting. 
And you can see that's kind of taken its shape. I'm leaving that a bit loose for a reason. The reason I'm leaving that a bit loose is that part there is where I'm going to attach it to the head. So now I'm going to try and shape this, flatten it down a bit more. These ears do look slightly bigger than the ones I made previously. But by the time I've finished felting them and shaping them, they'll probably be okay. I'm going to go with it anyway. I'm just going to kind of try it out for size on my bear. Yeah. Uh, maybe a little bit too big. Maybe I could take some out of that. If you need to do this, just, just pull some off. It's, it's not going to hurt it. Just whack a bit more off there. So I'm taking the size of them down. There we go. That's probably more about it. It's a case of trying it for size on your bear as you're making it. And you can just make adjustments like I did there as you go along. So don't feel you have to keep going with something that you know is not going to be the right size. And now we're trying to flatten it out a little bit. I am using just the one needle today. Um, I could have used my two needle tool, but because this is quite a small um, project and also um, I think sometimes you need the precision with this that you wouldn't actually you need with other things necessarily. I think the one needle suffices. So turning it over, making sure that the back is all needle felted in as well. You're not going too far in with your needle on this occasion, you're kind of smoothing it out a little bit. So it's all holding together but what you're trying to do is get that smooth, not too smooth, I'm wobbling you, I do apologise. <laughs> uh, smoother. Because he is a bear and he has fuzzy ears, so that's all to be expected. Okay, so now I'm going to see how that fits on my ball. That's looking about the right size. So am I balling that and thinking, yeah, that's probably good. And now I'm going to make another one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go off, I'm going to make another one that's the same as this one and then I'll show you how we attach them to his head. Okay so now I am just very carefully felting around the edges. I'm trying to keep my fingers out of the way so this is where your finger protectors would come in really handy. Just to make sure we've got all those little floofy bits needle felted in. Again on the back again, just a light felting. So going very, not very far in with your needle, just to smooth down those fibers. And now we've got two ears that are ready to be attached. So let's get our boy. Let me just felt a little bit more. As I said, this one could have been felted a little bit smoother. Um, so I could have kept going on this one for a little while. So you do it to the to the same degree as this one is. Let me show you this one. So you can see this one's just a little bit looser. So it could do with some extra belting. You can kind of see. And when you get to the point where you're seeing the holes and you need to go in a little less deep so that you can just smooth it out on top. But for the purposes of what we want today, this is going to be fine so that I can show you how to attach the ears on. Now we need to position it on our, our felty teddy. And we're kind of about there. So what I'm going to do, the little bit of floof that we had spare at the bottom, that's going to be the bit that attaches in to your bare head. So. If you find it fiddly, what you can do is grab yourself some pins with the little bobble head pins and just kind of hold it in place. That that will give you a little position there. You can work from with you an extra hand if you like. Oh, I'm grabbing some bits there I don't need. What I'm going to do is attach this to the head. 
You can position the ears on your bear wherever you want them to be. I'm going to try and take mine in a little bit to give it kind of like a little bend in bit. If you wanted to as well, like I said, you could use the uh, this to add a little contrast onto the inside. But I'm keeping it quite simple for now. But if you fancied doing that, you could do that. On my other bears that I make, um, some of them are wonderful, colourful creations with different coloured ear inners and different muzzles and but we're keeping it quite basic quite simple so that everyone can access this and have a little go at trying to make their own bear and I didn't want to make it too complicated okay so I've got that in enough now I can take my pin out and start to felt down you can see I'm going down through to try and attach that firmly onto the head of my bear. You can also try and sculpt this a little bit by pushing that bottom bit in and that bottom bit in so that he's getting his ears shaped a little bit. Also look at the back. Going around the back you need it to be attached at that side as well and if you go through the ear you can see I'm going through the ear and into the head. That's the bit we need to be nice and attached on. I'm going to try and push that in a little bit further. If you wanted to, you could shape these before you put them on. So you could, in effect, go like that and then shape it in that way. It just depends on what kind of an ear shape you want for your bear. And that is entirely up to you. Okay. This boy's got quite big ears. Bless him. <laughs> It all gives them the personality. If you wanted to make this into a rabbit head as well, you could literally make these into rabbit ears and make yourself a bunny. There are lots of different options. You could make cat ears and make it into a cat. Just with some adjustments on how you do the face and how you do the ears, you can make many different creatures. Okay, so now I'm going to go with my second ear, ear ear. Uh, positioning that, eyeballing it to try and see where I want it to be, grabbing my bobble headed pin again and kind of positioning in it there. It's kind of to the back of the head, um, about there I would say, yeah, about there is good. So I'm going to continue attaching my ears and I will be back very shortly to show you how to do the muzzle. Okay, so my bear has got his ears now. So what we need to now make him is the muzzle that goes on the front of his head. So I'll pop that down there. Uh, I'm thinking I will probably only need all of this, probably just about this amount. And again, we're going to do the, trying to make it into a ball. I'm taking a bit more off as well. You can kind of see when you're making it. Oh, I've got a bit of felt in there as well. <laughs> You can kind of see when you're making it up into its ball shape how it's going to, how big it's going to be. And you don't want it to be too big so it takes over the whole head. Um, and again, what we're going to do with this, we're going to build up into starting with a ball shape. So making sure that we're felting it into some kind of a small ball. Just keep folding in the bits that are escaping. And what we want to end up with start off with is a small ball so it gets a little bit fiddly what you could do is if you want to hold it in place with another needle while you felt it that keeps your fingers out of the way so holding another needle in there you just have to be aware that you don't want to hit that needle because um, that could cause breakages and we don't want that but it does kind of hold it in place for you so that your finger isn't in the way <laughs> Which is most important. Kind of needle felt my mat now. A little bit of another colour that's managed to make its way into that. Again, it's just that process. Keep going. Just keep keep rolling it around. If you want to, you can kind of roll it in between your hands as well to try and get it into a ball shape. Sometimes that helps. 
rolling it on the desk even. Oh, now it's rolled off altogether. I'll be back. Okay, I found it. <laughs> it rolled off onto my floor because I was a bit too vigorous with my rolling. <laughs> it happens. It's not the end of the world. Okay, so it's getting into vaguely a ball shape at the minute. We don't want to needle felt it too hard. So what we now want to do is to flatten it out a little bit. We've got the ball shape and now we're kind of going on one side just to flatten it so it's more of a lozenge shape rather than a ball shape. And now we get our head and what we're going to do is deep deep needle it into the head so paying particular attention to the edges so going round from the bottom and going into the head so you're getting all those loose fibers in into the head moving your way around it keep moving it around to attach it on You can spend as much time on this as you want to to make it the smoothness that you would like it to be. For the purposes of this, I'm, I'm going fairly fast, so I do apologise. <laughs> um, all you need to do is to smooth it is just go in lighter, lighter, smaller, so that you're not disturbing all the fibers as you felt. But what I want at the minute is for this to be firmly attached to the base head. Which I think it is getting there now. Again giving some more attention. What I tend to do with this brush is I turn it over because um, sometimes the brush hairs the brush hairs on the mat pull up the fibres and I don't really want them to do that. Just on a surface so that I'm not um, damaging anything. Because this needle is not going all the way through to the mat, it's just literally going into the head so it's not going to hurt anything and it's not going to break my needle as long as I'm aware that I don't push it in too far. Okay, so there we have one bare head, one muzzle. Now you can flatten this down further if you want to. But I quite like it to stand a fair way away from his face. Because the next thing we do, it's going to start adding in the details to it. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do, uh, because I want to be able to give these time to set, are the uh, eyes. Let me pop my pins out of the way. Get rid of this needle felt needle and all the little floofy bits. <laughs> put my pins away. We don't need those now because everything's attached. Okay so what you're looking at now is looking to see how you would like the eyeballs to be positioned and what we're going to do is to needle felt in one area so we're kind of creating a little hole for our brad to sit in. I don't know if you can see that there. Okay, you can see that little eye hole there that I'm making that with my needle. I'm just going to keep felting that so that I've got a nice area for the brad to sit in. I'm going to do the same on the other side. Can you see that's making that indentation? This will make it good for the brad to sit in, but it will also um, make it so that the brad will sink further down into the head because you don't want the brads to sit on top. You look a little bit googly eyed that way. So we're, what we're doing is um, just creating a little area for them to sit into, if you like. And we can test this. We don't have to put the glue on straight away. So you can actually have a go by pushing in your brads 
without any glue on them to see how they look. And you can push them quite deeply in and they kind of don't sit on top of the fur, they, they kind of sink into it, which is what you want. Once you have got that positioned, it's fighting with me now, <laughs> you can then add in your glue. Now I did have a little piece of card here. Oh, that one. There's a piece of card just to put some glue on. Because this is the fiddly bit. Well, there are many fiddly bits, but this is quite fiddly and you don't want to get it wrong. You just need a little dot. This is the Aileen's Felt and Foam Tacky Glue. There is another variation of this one that I also have, which is the Beacon Felt Glue. So either of those two work well. But I've been using this one lately. So we take the end of our brad. Let me move him out of the way for a minute. And if you've got some tweezers, this might be a good idea. You kind of dip in the end of your brad, the little end of it, into the glue. We're going to push it in and we're going to push it down. If you see a little bit of glue on the edges, don't worry about that or on the eye. That will all set clear. Um, it's sometimes bound to get little bits of glue that's just around the eye hole, but that will all set. So do not worry about it. <laughs> it's a clear drying glue, so it's all good. So back to this again, dipping in my brad, trying to get some on the edges. As I say, if you had a pair of tweezers, that might be handy to do this. Pushing it in, pushing it into the head, and then making sure it's securely in there. And now what we do with that is we leave that to set and then we will have a go at his little nose and mouth. Okay, so he's got his eyes in place and now he needs his mouth. I'm going to leave him sat there. This is where this little bit of floofy black wool comes in. Now you can see how tiny his nose is. And what I'm trying to do is roll this up between my fingers into a ball to some kind of a small ball and positioning it. Now you don't want to put it in the middle, you want to put it kind of at the top of the, the muzzle so that it's not centred, it's off centre and it's more of the top situation. And then you just gently felt in position. Once you've got the first bits in, you can start to shape it a little bit. Don't bend your needle too much. If you're pulling bits in, don't, don't force it because that will break your needle. But we're kind of just shaping it a little bit to get the shape of his nose on the top of his muzzle. And that's about it. That's all it takes. You can obviously work on it a little bit longer if you want to but that is basically it the next bit you'll need a needle i have pre-threaded this one because i have terrible times threading this when i'm on camera <laughs> as anybody who's watched many of my videos where i have to thread a needle may attest to um so what i'm going to do i'm not going to put a knot in the end because what i'm going to do is hide this into the head so if you can see i'm going through the head at an angle and i'm going to come out just underneath the middle of the bottom of that nose which is there that will go in there but just stay hidden in there i'm going to come down to about there and then i'm going to take it sideways so that's the bit that goes down from his nose downwards. And then I'm going to come and take that to the centre. So it's going from there to the centre and coming out again equal at the other side. Pulling it a little bit. And I'm going to take that into the centre again. So it's basically like three stitches that you're putting in to give the the idea of a mouth and um, the little bit that comes down from his nose to give him some definition.
And I take that all the way through the head. And if I'm happy with it, which I am, can I pull it in a little bit? And then I will grab my scissors and do a snip. Now at the back, you can probably see where that um, thread is. If you needle felt that into the head, then that disappears. If it doesn't, for whatever reason, which one? This, this one's not disappearing for that reason. Small amount of wool, place it over the top and just needle felt it in and that gets rid of that so no one will be able to see where it entered <laughs> or finished. <laughs> there we go, that's all done. And there you have your bear head. And what you can do with him now is you can attach him onto, I've got him on a key ring on this one. And it's got a little um, ring there that I've just sewn on to the top of his head. You can do this many ways. You could actually have something that comes up through the bottom and comes out of the top and then you can make it into a ring and attach it. But I just found this, I've got these on hand. So I thought I would use these just to show you. What I will be doing in the future, as I say, is we'll be using this head and giving him a body and some arms and legs. <laughs> so if you're interested in seeing this done as an actual miniature bear, a needle felt of miniature bear, then do like and subscribe um, and also um, click on the bell. And if you click on the bell, that will then um, alert you when I upload new videos. And hopefully soon, um, possibly next week or the week after, I will be showing you how to make the rest of this bear in order to make him into a miniature bear. But for now, we've got a very cute key ring. Have a very good day and I hope to see you very soon with another video. Ta-ta for now!